my jazz fans um, and arrangers and musicians and other nice people. Good to see you today. And um, today we're going to talk about writing for the brass section. Uh, when we say the brass section in a jazz big band, that's generally uh, trumpet section and trombone section. Uh, in a later show, we'll talk about French horns and tubas. But for now, let's just uh, limit it to the uh, trumpets and the trombones. So they can act independently. You can have the trumpets by themselves. You know, you can have a voicing like that. Or like that, it does. Or, uh, you know, those, uh, trumpets can sound great. Just the, just the four trumpets. Or the trombones could be by themselves. A lot of times they play triadically. of voicings as well. Um, I like to write for three trombones um, uh, rather than four. Um, and uh, so for this one, we'll be talking about three trombone writing, but in a, in a later show, I'll talk about about writing for four, the bass trombone and combining that with the three tenor trombones. For now, let's just consider that we have three or four trumpets and uh, three uh, tenor trombones. So, um, they can play in octaves because the trumpet and the uh, trombone are pitched an octave apart. So if a trumpet plays a B flat concert, you C, and a trombone plays a B flat an octave below, they're in exactly the same place in their the range of their horn. So they're it's a natural blend. If they play the same dynamic, they blend perfectly. Um, we rarely ever write the trumpets and trombones in unison uh, because that would put the trombones in a much hotter register of their instrument than the trumpets. Or if the trumpets are up high, uh, that would put the trombones uh, either out of range or just uh, very difficult to play up there. So uh, that just, uh, we don't do that. Um, it's it's pretty it's exceedingly rare let's just say octave unison is the natural thing or you could just have one one section playing unison the trumpets are playing a... they could do that or the trombones either one uh, that's fine or both together uh, that's gonna be fine um, so there when we combine the two sections together to create chords. Generally, in most cases, um, writers will give the trombones the basic chord tones, the root, that could be root third, root fifth third, and then give the trumpets upper partials. So they combine to get those nice kinds of sounds. Or the trombones could also have root seventh third, structure triad. Here I play like a C7 in the trombones and an A triad in the little out of tune. Sorry about that. Um, an A triad in the trumpets over the C7 so that we get a flat nine and we get a, a 13th. Um, that's uh, very common. Uh, Thad Jones uh, did that a lot in his writing. Um, he will very often will double, he'll have a triad of the trump, top three trumpets, and then double the fourth trumpet an octave below the, the first trumpet. Um, don't have to double uh, that, that. You could have the trumpet's voice in a four part voicing like that, and then give the trombone something uh, below that. Here's an example uh, from the Harlem Nutcracker. Um, where uh, I have the, uh, the trombones voiced tightly underneath the, the, the trumpets. The trumpets could be voiced, say, here. And the trombones could be... So the trombones are up high, and the trumpets are right on top of them. That's, um, 
that will give you a lot of brightness. Um, if, the, if you're looking for bright, that's, that's the way to do it. <laughs> an example from um, same show Harlem Nutcracker this is a different piece this is uh, from Snowflake Joys uh, where uh, I have the trombone spread out and then the trumpets um, voiced uh, in close position but uh, much higher so the trombones are on the basic pitches and the trumpets have some have some tensions in their voicing Getting back to the idea of that we have these two separate sections, the trumpet section and the trombone section. They can, they can operate independently um, in counterpoint. We could do imitative counterpoint where we have a, a, a motive that one of the sections will play and then a few bars later the other section will come into play. It's generally we do this in unison, each section will be unison, the trumpets are unison and then the trombones come in on the same idea. Um, it could be a, an octave lower, or it could be um, it could be on a different interval. It could be coming on the, a fifth higher, or a third higher, or any interval. Um, it could be a minor second higher. It doesn't matter. Um, so this is uh, this happens in uh, in uh, this arrangement on Chicago. <laughs> Another way to um, pit the trumpets uh, against the trombones is one of the sections can be in unison and the other section can be harmonized. Uh, this first example, he ain't got rhythm. Uh, the trombones are unison and the trumpets are harmonized, playing opposing ideas. <laughs> the same lines of, of having the trumpets and the trombones playing uh, uh, against each other, comp competing ideas. Um, this next example is from a piece called Bumper Cars. You know, when you go to the amusement park and you get in the bumper cars and you, the two cars hit each other, and I tried to capture this in the, uh, uh, in the music. And so the, uh, uh, I have the, the, the trumpets and the trombones playing opposing rhythms 
uh, in straight mutes, uh, because the straight mutes will, will make it sound more percussive, uh, brighter, and um, uh, it won't be as loud, but, um, but it has a nice brightness to it. So that's about it for today. Um, we'll listen to um, some more bumper cars on the way out. It would help me very much if you could like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed this, and um, we'll see you the next time. Okay.